Hey everyone, Gallifrey Ferret 97 here. Welcome to today's very special video where I've unearthed my Dot 2 VHS collection from storage. Got it all out, displayed it, and uh, yeah, I'm going to take you through from the first Doctor era right up to the 90s on VHS. So yeah, I've picked this up throughout the years through various car boot sales, and I kind of stopped collecting once I sort of got into the classic DVD range. Uh, before it would be good to look back, as I say, because I'm going through my collection currently, getting rid of stuff. But before this all goes, I thought I'd do VHS collection, showing you what I've got, and take you through a history of uh, all the different stories, giving my views on some stories and some memories and stuff. So yeah, let's jump to uh, 1963's Unearthly Child. So first of all, we have Unearthly Child with the Doctor and Susan. Because it's really cool, a blended effect with the eyes, or Banner says the first ever television story. Um, I say these are just amazing artwork. I think that's the most thing that I love about these. So this one has no pictures. You'll find with these, a lot of them have sort of the, all the pictures from the stories. But this one does not. So you've got a synopsis of the story uh, and how sort of Dot 2 started. So yeah, so that's an earthly child. Then we have the Daleks. Now, when this originally came out in the 90s, I think 1990 to be precise, so they got two of the Daleks, Daleks there. This came in like a two video pack. I've only got part two, so this episode is five to seven. Obviously, part one has uh, episodes one to four with a black cover variant, so instead of red, it's black. So you've got Susan outside the TARDIS, the Doctor and Susan within the Dalek there, and the sort of the story. So yeah, it's cool that they kind of release these across the, the two packs, but then obviously when they re-released it, remasters we have obviously the silver sticker there in the late 90s they were able to put more on one uh, tape as uh, so again you've got kind of similar pictures uh turner who's produced it and the turn us when the day a date was as well so yes yeah, so it's cool to have this as well uh on to the third of a story the edge of destruction and because obviously it's only a two part they've included doctor who the pilot episode so this is the unaired pilot they filmed it a few weeks before on an earthly child uh, and obviously with the 90s ones, when they changed the covers, I think after the TV movie, they used to put the artwork on the slide, which is a quite nice idea. But then he went to like photo generic type of um, covers, not this kind of unique, amazing artwork. So you can see all the story details on there, uh, in terms about the unair pilot. So yeah, so that's a, a neat little addition. The next one is the sensor rights. So the sensor rights, the time meddler and the gunfighters came uh, in a first Doctor box set, which we'll see near the end. Um, yeah, so this is just part of that collection. So the Sensorites, uh, with a cover of the Sensorite and a cool rocket out there. On the back, it's nice images. Very cool, obviously now we've got the Sensorite set. Then we have the Crusades and the Space Museum. So the Crusades is missing parts two and four. Episode one and three are included on this, along with the Space Museum, which is a four-parter. This came with a limited digital box, which you see at the end. We've just got the tape here, so yeah, you've got the two episodes i think a cd as well accompanied this so you could listen to episodes uh, two and four so this is the chase and you see this is a very different uh, cover so again this came part of a limited edition dalek box set back to the unique art got mechanoid the tardis and the dalek time travel machine as well so again this is released for the 30th anniversary along with the remnants of the darks we'll see near the end in not such a good way an image from an earthly child <laughs> which is quite an odd choice so this is another story part of the first doctor box so you've got the time meddler I've got Vicky on there and the Viking helmet. What do you think this is? A space helmet for a cow? Well, these stories, I don't mind it. It's pretty good. I've really gave my opinion on any of these stories. They're pretty good so far. There you go. Uh, the Gunfighters. The actress who sings um, the Gunfighters song has sadly passed away quite recently. Here we have... What? A missing episode? So this is um, a recon. Uh, obviously, when I picked up at the time, at a couple, I don't know who's done this. I think this has um, the loose cannon thing. This is from someone's obviously personal collections. Here we have the War Machines. This is the restored version. There's a really good documentary on the DVD, which shows you how they reconstructed, like putting in back frames. There's a lot of sensor cuts for Australia and when it was sent off, so they kind of patched it all back together. These features, a special introduction for the War Machines on Blue Peter. I'm taking it inside as well. There's the behind the scenes missing stuff and how it's restored. Uh, and you've obviously got adverts as well. It shows you obviously what was available. It's more like the books and stuff like that. Then we have the 10th planet. Uh, some very cool looking Mondasian Sidemen. Obviously the final one heart story. Of course, episode four is missing, sadly. Uh, so they've done a recon. Well, obviously in the DVD animated it, but yeah, great uh, great story. Obviously introducing Sidemen, setting up the show for the future. This actually hasn't been opened. 
There we have the tomb of the Cybermen. This is presumed dead, returned to BBC after 20 years. So my signature for this is from Deborah Watling. So I remember taking this to a convention and getting signed. So she's passed away now. But yes, it's amazing. This must have been like gold uh, when they found this in the 90s. We had a similar experience with the enemy of the world and the web of fear in 2013. It does feature exclusive instruction by the director. But yeah, this must have been so cool, like buying a VHS with four new episodes. And this is one of those classics you can just watch again and again and again. Switch sides to go on the other bit. So now we're on to season six. So we have uh, The Dominators. I believe this is the artwork's uh, illustrator's uh, signature, I believe. Just want to find what signage was, but then we have the mind robber, various uh, people from the story, Got the unicorn, very trippy episode one. Then we have the crotons. This story was shown in the, the five doctors season, like 1980. So they screened a load of episodes on BBC two from like each of the five or well, four doctors at the time, actually. I think the goblet was like technically a fifth doctor, so it was obviously appear at the end. But yeah, very cool cover, like the kind of second doctor in the kind of view of uh, the Crotons, that's pretty cool. Then we have the War Games parts one and two, it's a 10 parter. So as you can see here, it's the same cover, uh, just with the different colored things at the top. We've got a famous image of the fourth second Doctor, Zoe and Jamie. Moving on to color, but before we do, here we have you know, the Missing Years tape. This is just a little documentary, I think, just kind of saying at the time what was available, why the episodes went missing. We got the underwater menace on there as well. It's quite funny because I think on this, I like, I don't know if it's in the vein that says, oh, there would always be 110 episodes. And then there's a thing at the end saying, after this documentary was made, they found uh, the lion, <laughs> which is part of the Crusades. Yeah, never say never. We're on to 70s now, so it was Spearhead from Space. I think this was released 89 or 1990. And there's a quite a few of these, uh, which were obviously reissued. Great opening story. I actually watched this bit of it on Forces TV. So they started screening classic Doctor Two episodes, which is pretty cool. Dot Two and the Solorians. Now, as you can see, it's got a little paint brush on it. Uh, and I think the only one I've had, so here we go, Terror of the Orphans as well. This was a new process back in the 90s, where obviously all, most of these episodes obviously existed in black and white, unfortunately, uh, due to the color being chucked. But there were some fans, I think in America, or whoever's recorded it uh, in Australia, and they managed to sort of put the two images together, using the colour of one, the black and white, uh, to give a really high quality image. Yeah, so we did this on the Solorians. Released in 1993, as I say, for the first time since 1970, the full restoration colour version. So that's pretty cool. I remember watching this with my granddad, actually, um, as well as an earthly child, on these VHSs. <laughs> Uh, it's like, due to our of nature of this film, the sound and pitch quality may vary occasionally. Please not adjust your sound. I think they got the same message on the Sea Devils, actually, which is quite cool. So that's uh, pretty good. The Ambassadors of Death. They could actually colorize some of this. The tapes feature over 90 minutes with color, with the remaining material black and white due to our of nature of the story. Pitch and quality is vary. So they couldn't, unfortunately. Obviously, the DVD, they did. You kind of get a big mix of match of these. Double cassette now, Inferno, uh, with the Brigadier's eye patch from the alternative parallel world show you all like black and white images as well yeah i watched episode seven of this actually re-watching the uh Pertwee years apparently this is episode seven of the inferno was the first john Pertwee story filmed which i didn't realize but apparently that's what it is on the access from the Pertwee vhs so tell the autons again the same process as the Solorians, just been released on season eight blu-ray uh so again just tells you that hey don't adjust your vhs's um, very cool story, very dark, great instructions to Madison, great return of the Autons. I'd be interested to actually try and rewatch these to see how improved, obviously this is the first time they obviously recolorized really it using putting two copies together. Here we have the Mind of Evil. This does include bonus color footage, but unfortunately most of this at the time uh, was black and white. Luckily now we've had a whole colorization of the Mind of Evil on the DVDs and the Blu-rays. But it's a very cool story, obviously you've got the the mind machine, which the Doctor sees all his various enemies. Uh, the Master sees the Doctor, it's quite funny. The Claws of Axos, very cool cover. I think this is one of the first ones I got, actually. This is one of those early 70s ones that uh, survived in colour. And then finally for this uh, row, uh, Colony in Space is one of the later 90s ones. Obviously, it's a six-parter, which they managed to fit onto tape. A bit too long, probably, this story. It also features quite a young actress at the time. Uh, who would go on to be a very famous character in Coronation Street. 
Moving to second row, so we've got Day of the Daleks. I believe this is the well, the first original releases of it. They reissued quite a few of these because they originally released these like early 80s with like cut down versions, so cut down to 90 minutes. Then they re released them again, restored, and they released them without the cuts, etc. So this is one of these, but I love Day of the Daleks. The special edition on DVD is amazing. Curse of Peladon, The Return of the Ice Warriors. I rewatched this actually the other day. So I watched Dare the Daleks because of the Dare the Dice figure set. Then continued this, and obviously now the Sea Devils uh, return. I watched it as well. So I watched this one to kind of bridge the gap. And this one, the stories were well, actually part of the, the Monsters season, which was off the back of the Five Doctors thing. So they did this, Earthshock, maybe Genesis as well. The Sea Devils. Massive uh, double view pack, great artwork. Got the masses prison in the background, an army of sea devils. Obviously, it's very nostalgic, obviously, because they're about to return at some point in spring with Jody. Yeah, fantastic story, absolutely brilliant. We watched it the other day, a few weeks ago, and uh, yeah, phenomenal. This is uh, The Mutants, but this is a BBC America one. This is from America. <laughs> you just pick up these various ones off of Garvey's. Uh, I can't play this, unfortunately, on my VHS player. This is obviously the same cover as the British one. Um, obviously, yes, it's formatted to the American region. On to season 10, the three doctors got a mega, and obviously, the three doctors. Great story. You, again, one of those just rewatched again and again. So, it's been available for the first time BBC Video, so I don't know if this is one of the original releases. Carnival of Monsters. Uh, now, this is interesting because there's three limited edition collector's cards inside, which, if I do take it out, there are six cards which have uh, the whole uh, front cover. Which is amazing. Okay, got some information, fun facts, including the cameo of the Cybermen and stuff. Episode 2 is a special arrangement of the Ron Grainer theme, previously heard only in Australia. I think that theme tune is the one which is going to be like the next theme version of the theme tune, but they tried to scrap it, but then it went out on some episodes. Then we have Frontier in Space, which has a great cameo of the Daleks setting up uh, Planet of the Daleks. This is meant to be homage to like the Dalek Master Plan, having the 12th part of this being the first six. And then Planet being the second, but yeah, I, I rewatched uh, the final episode on the Pertwee Years uh, VHS. Planet of the Daleks. We got Supreme Dalek there, and loads of different Daleks there. I think I think that's either the Dalek. There's just a few images. You think, wait a minute, that's not what's set in this story, but it's quite fine to spot. This contains one black and white episode. So episode three at the time only survived in black and white so yeah episode three goes to black and white on this vhs so amazing people recolorized it and yeah so you can watch the full uh color story in one go on dvd and blu-ray time warrior i need to re-watch this actually i've not re-watched this in quite a while obviously this and time's obviously being a major part in season 13 flux so this is like a photo or actual photo of them but i don't know if it's like a drawing version of links this is spaceship flying down to earth so yeah, I think again, it's one of the original ones. One of the classics, uh, written by the great Robert Holmes. Invasion of the Dinosaurs, which has some quite good looking dinosaurs. Is, is not what the dinosaurs look like in the episode. Maybe on the season 11 Blu-ray, if when that comes out eventually, we might be able to get some CGI dinosaurs because they like updating. The special effects. I think episode one, does it say on it? Episode one is in black and white. Uh, fortunately, this is part of the Doctor Who 40th anniversary, so it's quite a well, the last VHS is released, but again, they recolorized it on the DVD, which is not the best, to be honest, hopefully they'll do an updated version on the Blu-ray. Death to the Daleks, complete and edited, because like, as I said earlier, uh, they chopped them down to fit into a 90-minute VHS, I guess. It's just an image, uh, and they've put the, the, the x one City in the background. I quite like this story. They've got one of those soft bots. I like this in Revenge of Simon. There's probably one of the... Fans probably don't feel like the greatest Daleks and Simon stories, but yeah, I got quite find it quite fun. And the sequel to the Curse of Peladon, Monster of Peladon, not as good as the, the Curse of Peladon. Amazing cover, actually. I really like this. Quite cool to do like a sequel um, to the Curse of Peladon. And then sadly, finally, on to uh, Planet of the Spiders, uh, the final uh, John Purby story. Uh, great, obviously, very blue centric uh, with the Metabelis crystal. The great one with the doctor facing up to her. And on the side, they don't have the actual cover, they just have an image from the story. I actually do with Genesis, actually. One of those stories you need to rewatch, actually, but yeah, obviously, really sad ending. Like, they make it like the doctor actually kind of, that she just John Pertwee dies <laughs> instead of like regenerating and saying fine lines. So yeah, it's a really sad ending, but um, yeah, it's quite a cool thing, like all spiritual stuff, and yeah. Now onto the Tom Baker era. So we have Robot, 
Uh, this cool image of the robot actually increasing in size, which happens in part four. Yeah, great opener. Uh, great first story uh, for Tom's long era. The Ark in Space. So again, this is a completely unedited version, a re-release from the original VHS, just so it has everything included, nothing cut out. Yeah, again, another classic story. Uh, the Doctor's great speech about humanity. So this is another two-pack. Uh, so the Centauran Experiment and Genesis of the Daleks. So this will be eight episodes. Obviously, wrong colour Dalek on there. Obviously, this entire experiment is obviously only two parts, but Genesis is six. Most of the first ones are picked up, actually. Um, yeah, season 12 is a great solid episode, like, or story, sorry. Yeah, it's a cool idea. You, you'll find this later on. I think you do it with one of the fifth Doctor stories, putting two stories onto one kind of set. Then we have Revenge of the Cybermen. I don't know what version this is, but yeah, I have a soft spot for this one. Uh, so it's, yeah, one of the very first uh, VH... Well, this is the first VHS. There's quite a funny image of... The very first release of it, which has like a uh, shock Cyberman on the cover. This is the Tom Baker titles uh, they've put on there. Now season 13, uh, so we've got Terror of the Zygons. There's a really great clip of John Nathan Turner for an interview. Um, and he mentioned at the end of it, like, so what VHS is coming? They sell this, Terror of the Zygons, and I believe Tanza Wing Chiang. They've got the Zygon spaceship, got the Loch Ness Monster down there. So it's a cool kind of thing where they have like fish images, but they actually have original kind of artwork drawings mixed in, which is quite a cool idea. Planet of Evil, which obviously then they kind of just do a full the commissioning of artwork. Very similar to Lee Binding's cover actually on the DVD, from the same elements. I don't really remember that too much about the story, but obviously the inside studio, like the jungle uh, planet, is just incredible it would pass up in today's uh, tv standards as well primers of mars uh, my good friend adam the autumn movie's favorite tom story again this one of the original releases uh, amazing suit tech one of those all-time classics the android invasion got a bit of a spoiler there with sarah as an android and um, the doctor being tied up it's that pillar in the middle of that town Instead of images from the story they've just put images of the artwork which is quite interesting the brain of morbius Another one of those ones that they re-released uh, from the original range to make sure it's obviously all, all restored. It's got Morbius there. and one's like a Hammer Horror poster in a way. Um, but yeah, obviously then this clip obviously featured in The Time as Children again where the Doctor sees all his different faces. I've not rewatched really the story actually since The Time as Children so it'd be interesting to rewatch that now knowing that they're basically canon. And one of my all-time classes actually, The Seeds of Doom. Uh, amazing six-parter. Uh, such gory horror elements. I remember the bloke being turned into a criminal, which is absolutely terrifying. But yeah, action packed, amazing six part. I absolutely love this one. New line, new season. It's got season 14. So the mask and Drago, very cool uh, mask. I've been watching this story once actually on, on DVD. I have to kind of re watch it. Uh, one of the classics, Deadly Assassin, uh, with the Doctor and Zone. A very cool image of with the Doctor in the Matrix. We've got the Rassel Sim as well, which obviously first featured in Revenge of the Cybermen. Uh, and there's the back. I think it's kind of quite cool because this story reimagined Time Lords. They've been kind of seen as just like godlike beings. It's very cool because Rob Holmes kind of fleshed them out and changed their image, to which we've got obviously today. The Face of Evil. It includes bonus interview with Louise James on the Swap Shot, which was obviously discovered uh, 22 years after. A very generic cover. Uh, very mysterious. Yeah, again, one of those stories just need to rewatch. really. <laughs> I haven't seen it in a while since uh, the original DVD. Ropes of Death. Again, one of the original ones that were released, or the first. Very similar to like, the Dare of Darts game. They just kind of repeat the same image over and over again uh, to give the effect of the robot. But they got Tans of Wing Chang, which again was released alongside uh, Terror of the Zygons. This is actually uh, the story they chose for the BFI screening, which was two years ago, actually. Uh, not long ago from filming this. I didn't go to it because the COVID stuff was kicking off literally the week after the obviously full-time lockdown. The Horror Fang Rock. I only watched this a couple of years ago, actually, on DVD for the first time. Feature, obviously, spoiler alert, The Rutans, the great enemy of the Centaurans, but this is written by uh, Terence Dix. The Invisible Enemy, uh, featuring K-9's first appearance. I think he was just meant to be in this one story, but then they're like, let's keep him on. Uh, such a great character. I quite like K-9. I understand obviously sometimes very easy like the kind of Sonic Scooge I've used for the plot. But yeah, some very cool visuals in this. Image of Fendal, which is one of those stories I've been mean to kind of re-watch. Rusty Davis famously said that before so him taking over and doing Rusty Davis era 2. He said he'd love to have done an Image of the Fendal sequel and repeated this story in BBC3. 
So it's very cool he's coming back. But will he do that? Well, who knows? The Sun Makers, I think written by Robert Holmes, who was very annoyed about taxes, so wrote a story about um, taxes. The Invasion of Time, very generic because they changed after the TV movie, which is a shame because we'd love to see what these artworks would have been like with the, these cool covers. But obviously, yeah, Sage Departure of Leela. Austin Tyrons, obviously the surprise enemy. Uh, invading Gaffrey at the end of episode 4. The special edition on DVD does wonders to this story. With the kind of tinfoil <laughs> and villains for the first one part. Then we've got this key to time. If I had the other three, it should create one image. Well, so I've kind of got to mix and match uh, from this season. On screen now, what it's meant to look like. Uh, this very cool image uh, going through the key to time series. It's got the first one, which got quite a faded logo, actually. It's got the Ryboss operation with the first part of the key. Uh, first episode for Mary Tam, funny puppet <laughs> at the start of the story, which meant to be his like terrifying creature. Then you got the Stones of Blood. Uh, I think Dot Two's hundredth story. Yeah, those two glittery things, uh, quite fun in the end, uh, where they put the Doctor on trial for a bit. But I did this in a rush along for lockdown, and um, yeah, no, it's a really good story. Power of Kroll. Uh, so this is a sticker which they would have put on the original. It says Key Time Part Five, so you kind of knew what it was a part of the, obviously the VHS releases. Yeah, probably not one of the weakest of this season. On to season 17, Destiny of the Daleks, the Darts of Town to five years. Rewatched this uh, with the announcement of the season Blu-ray uh, a while back. It's a pretty solid Dark story, not the best, not the worst. City of Death, which is signed by Lana Ward. I picked this up at a carpet again, so it could be fake, I don't know, but I assume it's real. So that's very cool, it's got uh, Lana's signature on it. Watched it at the BFI. Uh, for uh, the season 17 Blu-ray. Uh, great to watch such a cinematic doctor who obviously filmed in Paris. Creature from the Pit. What should be on the sofa for this? There's some quite interesting views in it. One of them summed up perfectly saying, it, it seemed quite good on paper, but I just don't think it was executed very well. It also got a famous creature, which looks like something it should have. The Horns of Naimon. Uh, it was strange actually, so they removed the Naimon on there, so it's just an empty void, which is a bit odd. Again, it's really part of the fourth anniversary of Doctor Who. I think if you have a laugh of this story, it's probably more enjoyable. Just don't take it too seriously. But sadly, obviously, this is the final story of season 17, which was not originally meant to be. Uh, the, obviously, originally meant to be Sharda. It was reconstructed um, here. So all of Doug's Adam's royalties from the sale of this video are being donated to comic release. That's really, really nice. So as you see inside, just before I look at all the script and stuff, it tells you uh, what has been released uh, on video so far. It tells you what monsters. So it's kind of varies within the different various reasons. If you look online, they'll probably have some quite good images of stuff. So that's the tape. Then we have the original script for Sharda. So you can kind of read along. On season 18, so we've got the Leisure Hive. I think one of the first ones have these these types of new uh, covers. Obviously, this is the start of the John Nathan Turner era. One of those stories, it's, it's not too bad. It's all right. Then we have, so these three stories make up. The E Space Trilogy. So we've got Adric there on the back. We've got all three of the covers. So we've got Moro's Gate, Full Circle, State of Decay. We've got the Doctor, the Marshman, Kano and the Tardis. And yeah, that's all three of the covers on there. Keeper Charkin. One of those stories I haven't watched for years, but I remember watching the time being mesmerised by a very cool atmosphere. This is Jesus Nissa and has the mask as well. So yeah, I'll have to rewatch that. Maybe on. VHS, even though I've got these names in Blu-ray. Here we have Canon and Company, the spin-off, which was obviously meant to be a series, but didn't actually happen. It's not amazing. They obviously hit their groove, obviously, when the Invasion Bane and Sarah J Adventures, which absolutely adore. And it's quite a cool thing to have a kind of spin-off back in the day with, with Kane and obviously Sarah. It would have been amazing to have, I guess, as a fan at the time, be like, oh, it could be a new spin-off, but sad it's only a one-off thing. It would have been cool to have that, I guess, at the time, having the two shows. So on to the fifth Doctor now. Cash Revolver with Anthony and his master and caught in the space time trap moment with the Doctor. Very kind of Labyrinth-esque. Yeah, not too bad. Uh, fairly enjoyable. Great with the fifth Doctor start of the story. Uh, and knitting Tom Baker's scarf. And sort of doing impressions of all the old Doctors. And then finally for this row, we've got The Visitation and Black Orchid. So similar to uh, Genesis of the Darts and St. Tyrone Experiment. Uh, Visitation's four parts and Black Orchid's two. So they've put the uh, two stories on each. Both really solid stories actually. Visitation, really great Fifth Doctor story. The Black Hawk is very unique. Basically historical like they did uh, with the Wiener Hartman episodes, having no alien or monster. Um, obviously then you've got Nissa's double, which they tend to do like obviously about the enemy of the world. The Massacre, I think there's like two Hartnells, etc. So yeah, they tend to have like 
uh, in Class Dot 2, actors playing different parts other than themselves on screen together. Continuing season 19, we've got Earthshock, uh, Adric's uh, broken badge, the return of Simon, but the departure of Adric. Watch this not long back actually on the Blu ray. Again, just one of those sensational stories, other than the best Simon stories. Amazing pacing and a great return for the Simon both Yes, yeah, sadly, Adric pays the price. Time flight, uh, not watch this one in since the original DVD release, but yeah, it's quite comedically bad. Get one of those stories if you have a good laugh or probably have a drink, it'd probably be quite funny. On to season 20, uh, Ark of Infinity with the return in Mega. We've got the Rassilon symbol there. I think this had special effects done on the DVD. It tells us that obviously this is Omega, who uh, originally was in the three dots, to give you a bit of history. But then got two episodes of the Black Guardian trilogy. So the first one, Mordrin Undead, which was quite a cool plot actually. We've got the introduction of Mark Strickson, aka Turler, who obviously was trying to kill the Doctor under the introduction of the Black Guardian. And obviously the return of the Brigadier. Originally, I believe, it was actually going to be Ian Chesterton who was going to be a part of the, the returning companion slash teacher, but I don't think he could do it. So, yeah, so he brought the bigger do instead. So, that's good. Uh, it's Terminus. This is Departure, Sandy, of the second story in this uh, Black Garden trilogy. The final story of season 20 The King's Demons. Very, very cool cover. Look inside as well, just a kind of quick preview. Uh, we've got obviously all the, the viewing figures little facts and figures. These inside covers change depending on which time it came out. Sometimes you get pictures, sometimes you get like awesome facts like this, etc. This, I believe, originally came in a two pack with the Five Doctors, not this version of the Five Doctors. I believe this Five Doctors is the original. You might say. From 1985, I believe. I'm not sure, I have to Google it. You can Google these numbers, what version it is. It's an amazing story. I do actually want to rewatch this story with the commentary because on the DVD, there's an Easter egg commentary. Uh, with David Tennant, Phil Collison and Helen Rayner, I think. And obviously when they released this in 1995 again, they did do an update, especially the Fetish version as well. One of the favourites, Resurrection of the Daleks. We watched this for the first time on VHS. Probably the most kill count in a Doctor Who story ever. This count as part of the uh, third anniversary. Then we have the final fifth Doctor story with Kazan Jazani. Some people's favourite. Amazing pacing. The final part just has you gripped. Um, I say the amazing cliffhanger part one. Each has an amazing cliffhanger, to be fair. Part four, even though you kind of know what's going to happen, obviously you're going to regenerate, but it's super intense on the edge of your seat stuff. And then obviously then season 21 ends with the twin dilemma, which is a bit of a dilemma. Not really getting the Colin Baker off to a, an amazing start. Quite a bold move to have the Doctor kind of be this super grumpy type figure who trying to kill Perry. It's an experimental type of thing. I don't think it went down to obviously this obviously put on the end of the case of Anjazani. obviously between these two stories there's quite a big gap a lot of people's minds obviously set by this one story and the kind of art they wanted to go on wasn't kind of fully realized sadly so on to uh the opening of season 22 which is going to come on blu-ray hopefully very, very soon tag the side men this came in a limited edition pack with the 10th planet yeah not too bad Simon story. I think they recreated the tombs just so that they, at the time, obviously two of Simon's missing. They didn't think it was going to come back. They did a reimagining of the tombs for this story so people kind of get a sense of what they'd be like. One of the best kind of big stories probably Vengeance on Varos. Head of its time about reality TV and obviously got Seal. He's one of the most memorable monsters from the 80s. Mark of the Rani, featuring the tune between the Master and the introduction of the Rani. I have to rewatch the thing because, again, I've not seen this one in a while when it comes out on Blu ray. Then we've got the Try the Time Lord box, which is pretty battered. And this is signed by Colin Baker's. <laughs> when I got this signed, he was like, Hey, we didn't pay too much for that box. I was like, Yeah, it's, it's pretty, pretty battered, unfortunately. So this features uh, all of the Try the Time Lord stories, all 14 episodes. And I believe this originally came like a limited edition TARDIS tin. Obviously, I don't have the tin, but yeah, amazing cover featuring all the different monsters and obviously the Valley Yard. Sadly, obviously this is the last Colin Baker series. On to the Seventh Doctor, it's got the return of the Rani and the introduction of the Seventh Doctor in uh, Time and the Rani. Oh, she's ahead of the season 24 Blu-ray. And yeah, it's not too bad. I, I'm, I'm very lost by the end of it though. The fourth part of the track explain the plot is like, I have no idea what's going on, but there's some nice emotion moments between Seventh Doctor and Mel. A lot of these, if you just have a bit of fun, don't get them too serious though. Quite good. Uh, Paradise Towers. Now, it does include the limited edition postcard. Some of these do, some of they don't. So, some of these actually did. And then you could have, like, a, I think one of the releases, maybe the King's Demon 5 Doctors 2 pack from the 90s, uh, came with, like, a, a folder where you could put all of them in. So, if you got all the VHSs, you could store the cards in there. While I bought these second hand, they obviously took the cards. <laughs> Dragonfire. 
Saying, saying goodbye to Mel and saying hello to Ace. Very cool cover. This was screened at the season 24 screening. Well, the first one after uh, COVID, actually. Remembrance of the Daleks. So again, this came in the Chase 2 pack. One of my multi-phone stories, period. Uh, amazing pace. I think this is one of those stories which, if you want to get sort of non-fans into the show, I think this is probably one of the stories to show them because it's just amazing action, great script. Silver Nemesis. So this is quite a unique release. This is got a making of, and it's got an extended version of the story, which was not released on the DVD. So hopefully when the season 25 Blu-ray comes around, we'll see this version restored. Um, yeah, basically the making of Silver Nemesis, obviously this is the 25th season of Doctor Who, it's meant to be the 25th anniversary, the 25th anniversary story to be Pacific. American company created a, a behind the scenes thing, so they filmed it all, special on program. So hopefully again, we'll see this documentary released uh, on the season 25 blue whenever that comes out. Great show, The Galaxy. What is the story actually, again, I rewatched on DVD, uh, kind of had a bug for the seventh Doctor for a bit. And when I originally watched it, I didn't think much of it, but on a rewatch, honestly, you're probably like one of my favorite seventh Doctor stories. Very creepy, and yes, yeah, some really cool elements in this. On a season, Battlefield, featuring previously having transmitted material, uh, which I think is on the season 26 Blu-ray. Shane the Brigadier is not in these covers that he features in. Yeah, very, very cool cosmic cover. This is an extended version of the story. Obviously, they cut them down to obviously fit in to a certain time for TV. Ghost Light, one of those stories which um, I need to rewatch because I never understood it. And I was like, am I might be in dumb. And I watched a documentary on the uh, DVD and they were like, no one quite knows what it's about. Very cool looking story. The ambience is amazing. Obviously, it's all interior shots, all filmed in the studio. One of the favourites, The Curse of Fenric. Uh, again, some new material, not broadcast. I can't remember the stage saying how they went back and restored all these. Obviously, they were cut down for TV. So, it's a great opportunity for fans. Obviously, you obviously don't have Doctor on TV at the time. This is one of my all time favourites. Again, one of those stories which I'd, you want to get people into Classic Who, show them this. And then, sadly, the, the end of the Classic Era, Survival. Amazing cover, but very cinematic. And yeah, sadly, it's three part of the end. The famous monologue by the Seventh Doctor was filmed last minute because I think they knew that it was going to be coming back for a, a season 27. Jumping to 1996 with the uh, TV movie. Just a cool looking pose of the Doctor using a candle to open, which I don't think he ever does, does he? I enjoy this. I don't know what if moments if this continued and Paul McGann is full series, but we don't have to think about that because now we have all the big finishes. So then on to uh, all the rest of these are kind of uh, bonus releases. Obviously, we obviously with the DVD stuff had the Lost in Time box set, which featured a load of like missing episodes, orphaned episodes, which didn't have like you know one episode from like a whole story. These releases uh, written produced by John Nathan Turner, presented by some of the Doctors. This is the Heart of the Years, presented by Sylvester McCoy. The back it tells you sort of a bit of history, and uh, shows you what they show. So they show quite a few different uh, clips as well. But the main thing is they got the pilot episode from Earthy Child, showing the whole thing. Uh, later obviously be re-released on the Edge of Destruction VHS. Uh, and then we got two episodes from Lost Stories. Uh, so we've got episode three of The Crusades, The Wheel of Fortune, which many years later, episode one popped up. And the final episode of The Celestial Toymaker, the only surviving part of that. So it's a very cool way to kind of reflect on the area, but also showcase episodes fans get a quite a cool clip of. Obviously it's continued uh, with the Troughton years. This one we had the partially missing stories. The Bone Will Stone in episode two, which is getting its animated release uh, very soon. I didn't mean the world. Only episode three survived at the time. Then we got the Space Pirates episode two, uh, which I did actually rewatch this. The Space Pirates episode two. I love the, the quirky character in it. And then we got uh, Pertwee years, obviously as the cover. Uh, both the Troughton years and the John Pertwee years are presented by. Uh, John Pertwee. So this is quite a lot of different stuff. Go up to Seven Inferno, which, as I said earlier, is, is apparently his first screen appearance. A glimpse of costume special effects. Fun episode, uh, Frontier in Space. Thing on Blue Peter about the Hoover Bill from 1973. Unseen footage of the title sequence. Clips from the Five Doctors. Uh, Longley, a great video on that. Uh, I don't know who filmed it. And then John Pertwee's personal favorite story. The final episode of The Daemons, which is in black and white. And so not long after, literally like a year or so later, they'd release the story with a uh, new colour process. On to the final row of VHS now, so we've got the Tom Baker years, which can be seen on the season 12 Blu-ray. And instead of like a presentation, this is basically just Tom Baker watching clips and reflecting on the certain stories and memories as a film in. Um, so yes, yeah, 90 minutes each, but it can be viewed 
on the season 12 Blu-ray. Now, onto the Colin Baker. So, John Nathan Turner was doing all this kind of stuff and they left the range. So, that's why we didn't get a fifth Doctor and seventh Doctor years. But that was planned, but um, he, he left uh, the range. So, we've got the Colin Baker years. So, a lot of stuff on here. This is going to be released actually on the season 22 Blu ray, which was confirmed in the trailer. There's quite a funny clip where they talk about Revelation of the Darks and like, oh, uh, well, yeah, we can't show this because the writer has withheld the copyright. So, we cannot show anything to you. Alas, we're not able to show you a clip from Revelation of the Daleks. Um, for some reason, the, the author of that story has declined to give his consent. So I'm sorry, we can't share it with you. So there's a lot of different clips, uh, Colin reflecting on certain bits. We've got two monster ones. We've got the Daleks, the early years, showing all the 60s stuff. Things right up to uh, either Daleks. So we've got various interviews. So we've got snippets from the first lot of episodes. Then we've got a load of orphaned episodes. We've got episode 10 from the Dalek Master Plan. Episode 5, Rare Clips and Power of the Daleks. And episode 2, of either the dice as well. And a little thing from uh, the Peter Cushing movies. And similar for the Simon as well. So it's obviously got two Simon, played by Colin Baker. So this shows the whole 60s. Recently discovered two of the Simon, because obviously this was literally just discovered not long before this. Four full episodes, got the Moon Base episodes two and four, which obviously was animated for D. And the William Space episodes three and six. More Than 30 Years and Tyus is an amazing documentary, uh, which is available on DVD. Incredible look back, uh, very emotional ending. Dalek Mania, a documentary stuff about uh, the Peter Cushing movies. Another documentary on uh, 30 Years of the Tyus. I think it's more of an independent thing. I was a Doctor Who monster. Uh, this is by Sassam McCoyle, interviews with different actors who played all the various monsters throughout the years. Return to Devil's End. This is a, a real time production. Um, so this update is with an exclusive new film. I believe not long after John Pertwee passed away, they put in a load of stuff. 1997, so obviously passed away in 1996, sadly. So I've never seen this. So I think I'm gonna watch this once I've got this video done. The Curse of Fatal Death. This is the comic relief special. And they bunged on a load of different uh, comic relief sketches. Uh, from the past. Again, that same Dalek. They like to use that Dalek image. Yeah, there's a French and Saunders sketch from the season 23 time. Fine enough, is written by Stephen Moffat. we would gone to be off the showrunner. Uh, this is the Davros limited edition box set. So the limited edition number is 653 of 10,000. So quite a low number. This is a reissue of a load of obviously Davros stories, the five Davros stories from the classic era. It makes up uh, one big image, as you can see. We've got first appearance, Jess of Daleks, we've got the Doctor and Sarah on the front. Then we've got Destiny of Daleks. Uh, no Davros this time, but we've got uh, Leela with Tom Baker's hat on. Resurrection of the Daleks. We've got the fifth Doctor, Turlo and Davros, obviously with London in the background. Revelation of the Daleks. I assume the copyright had been... Um, Lifted by this point, we've got some cool Necros Daleks, very snowy mountains as well, which also we didn't really see in the story. And then finally, Remembrance of the Daleks, uh, with the Seventh Doctor and Ace, so kind of a glimpse of the Dalek Civil War. And the final four are just kind of boxes and, and stuff I mentioned earlier, which I've kind of displayed. This is the uh, the Cruise of the Space Museum box set, so we've got a CD of episodes two and four. The Night of Jaffa and the Warlords. Then we got the uh, VA chest, which I've got over there, actually. Uh, it must have been bought separately. Some cool postcards from the, from the Crusades. We've got the uh, Space Museum, a villain from that. Julian Glover from the Crusades. And a really cool picture of William Hartnell. And then we have the TARDIS key ring, which um, I guess I have to reattach it. But yeah, this is quite a cool little vintage items then we have the box of the first Doctor special edition box set so you've got the time meddler the gunfighters and the sensor eyes and you can see the vhs covers on there if you open up the top that's where they'd all be but obviously they are amongst the others and finally we've got the limited edition tins so we've got the daleks limited edition tin uh, again part of release of the uh, 30th anniversary we've got the famous image of the daleks on uh, Westminster Bridge, dot two logo, stuff like that. On the bottom, it tells us what's in the set. So you also got the chase and remembrance of Daleks, and also a book inside. Uh, Strange use an image of net cross Daleks again. I think the Daleks just get a kind of like we just use whatever images for these sets. So open it up. So this is where the cardboard style VHS would be in. Yeah, here we have a uh, history of the Daleks book. Yeah, you got some cool images from the past Dalek stories. The Dalek tune also comes with this uh, pamphlet. Uh, which showcases all of what was available at the time. Uh, you can descriptions for the, the stories. The first page, you've obviously got William Harnock, Patrick and John Pertwee. Then we've got John Pertwee and Tom Baker. Here we have a quick look at 
uh, what stories are there. We've got the Fifth Doctor, not that many stories. And then Colin Savas, who obviously kept one page for the two. And there's all these special productions of the years ones, the box sets, the Monty Doctor stories, and the audio collections as well. And finally, we have the limited edition uh, Cyberman tin, which features the two stories, Attack of Simon and Tenth Planet, which is, again, amongst the collection. Thank you everybody for watching. Uh, as always, please comment, like, and subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Links and stuff in the description below. Do you have any VHSs? Do you have your collection? What's your favourite classic stories? What VHSs do you have? Let me know in the comment section below. But until next time, bye bye.